Hey everybody, Merry Christmas and welcome to Church at Home. And we're super stoked that you decided to join us today, taking a few minutes of your Christmas day to join us all together across our community as we focus on what is most important here today. So we're here at our home in Aptos, where Tim and Nicole Coleman from our Soquel location, by the way, and you can't see our dog Milo, he's right here, he's joining us. And right here on the backside, my back's getting hot with this fire, you guys. Hey, listen, we're super excited about what's gonna happen here over the course of the next 30 minutes. Not just from our home in Aptos, but you're gonna hear from some of our leaders in their homes all across the community. It's gonna be a fun time together. Yeah, we're gonna have Christmas songs, we're going to have the Christmas story read from the Bible, and we're going to have a special Christmas message from the Bennett family. And finally, um, we're going to take communion together. So you might want to pause this video and just grab some kind of food that you have around the house to take communion together with us. It can be crackers, juice, whatever you have on hand. Whatever, pancakes, coffee, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you have, it's going to be okay. So, hey, we're going to come back in about 30 minutes and wrap this up. So go ahead and just sit back, relax, and get ready for Christmas at home together. Hi, church family. Merry Christmas from the Matley home. Chris, Amy, Katie, Andrew, and Benjamin. Yeah, Merry Christmas, you guys. So we're going to sing a couple songs for you. Um, in the church, there has been a long tradition of singing Christmas songs around Christmas. It's a good time to do it. Um, and some of these songs are hundreds of years old. Um, but in fact, if you think about it, there's really two kinds of Christmas songs. There's the first kind, which brings glory and honor to God and celebrates the gift of his son, Jesus. And then there's the other kind. So which kind do you think we're gonna sing right now, you guys? First one. Oh. That's right, we're gonna sing the first kind of song, which is the kind that brings honor and glory to God. Uh, and point of fact, this one, this first one is called Joy to the World. So if you know it, then uh, feel free to join in and sing along. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her
thank you and we praise you and we just ask that our lives would give you all the glory that you are due in this season and this coming year. We love you and we thank you for all the things you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas, you guys. Amen. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Today we're going to be reading a passage of scripture from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born, in Bethlehem, in Judea. They replied, for this was what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. <clears throat> then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, <clears throat> Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Thank you so much for this time with us together. Merry Christmas. Hey everyone, Merry Christmas from the Bennett home. This is my wife, Jenny, and my daughter, Ruby, and my son, Kale. Hi. And you're in our house, and we're talking about Christmas. You just heard this passage from Matthew chapter 2 about the Magi who meet Jesus because they were following the star. And they were able to bring their gifts to Jesus. And I thought it'd be cool to just start by talking about what are the greatest gifts you've received? What about you guys? What are the greatest gifts you've received? Well, um, my greatest gift I've received um, is being loved by God and um, loving my, and my family. Oh, that's, that's really cool, Kale. Uh, the love and the peace of God. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. I would say probably the best gift I've ever received was when I asked Jesus into my heart. And also my family and my husband. Yes. Yeah, and for me... Um, of course, the love of God and to know Jesus, um, but also to to be married to my wife Jenny was the greatest gift because she gave me the greatest gifts of my life, which is my my son and my daughter Ruby. And the day that you were born, that was the greatest gift I've ever received. And uh, we're grateful to get to be together on Christmas and be together with all of you as we have church at home. This weekend. So we just heard the story about the Magi. Who are these people? You mean the Magi man? <laughs> yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. Okay, you're being funny. What are who are these Magi? What are are they the, what do you think about them? Seriously though. You mean Magi men. The Magi men? The Magi men. Yeah, the Magi men. Aren't they like the three wise guys? Three wise men. <laughs> I like the wise guys. The wise, wise guys. guys. The they wise are. Yes. Yeah, so like when you see the nativity scene over there that we have. <laughs> thank you, Ruby. Um, you know, you've seen the nativity scene and they're normally known as the three wise men. And that's because there's three gifts. It doesn't actually say that there's three of them. I know. Not to shatter your, your whole understanding of Christmas. Um, but these magi, they were ancient scientists and they study the stars and but they really don't have any they're kind of off the wall as far as like being part of the Christmas story because Matthew is uh, a Jewish author and he's writing to his people 
And what's interesting about this is that none of them noticed the star, but these magi saw the star, they followed it, and because of that, they were able to experience the greatest gift and be there to meet Jesus and bring their gifts to the king. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. That's and it made me cool. think about, isn't that cool? Yeah. Super cool. Um, it made me think about how there was a lot of people that didn't see that, that missed it because they weren't seeking it. And so I was thinking about how at Christmas time, it's really important that we're, it, it, we love gifts, right? There's lots of different kinds of gifts we hope to receive, but it's important that we're seeking the greatest gift. Does that make sense? Because sometimes there's things about Christmas that can distract us from the greatest gift. Holiday stress. Holiday stress. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. I saw the, <laughs> the the mailman today and he looked like he had a little bit of holiday stress. I can't imagine all the people in UPS and FedEx and oh. the mail and even driving on the road. You can feel there's like some tension in the air. Mm -hmm. people, people trying to get to places. <laughs> What are some other things that can distract us from the greatest gift at Christmas? What else? Um, not being um, with your family. Yeah, that mm -hmm. could be hard, for sure. Yeah, the presents under the tree because they're just objects. They're not like God. We have Christmas to like remember what Jesus has, like what He is and what He's done for us. But then we open these like other gifts that mm. they can't fulfill the like the need that we need inside that can only come from God. It's really good, Ruby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think too. Just the tradition of some of the traditions of Christmas, you feel a lot of pressure, and so you lose sight of what Christmas is really about because mm. you have these demands or obligations you need to go to, and then not enough finances to cover all the needs that may be presented or what are need to happen during a traditional Christmas and you really lose sight of Jesus in the middle of all that. So. Yeah, it kind of brings it to focus when we just think about the real meaning of Christmas. Yeah, like what Ruby said. I was thinking about how it said that when they saw the star, they were overjoyed mm -hmm. and how we experience joy when we're seeking the greater gifts. And we can all experience that, no matter even with if we're with our family or we're not, or if we have presents in the tree or we don't, we can still experience the joy of God when we're seeking that the greatest gift. And Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen says, "You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart." It's cool. it's a cool promise, right? Yeah. To know that no matter what, if you seek God, He says you will find me. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Okay, so the second thing I was thinking about was how um, these magi, they brought gifts to the king. What's that? You think it's more than 10 minutes? We gotta hurry up? Okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna hurry up because we don't wanna take up too much of your time. Thanks, Colin, for reminding me of that. Yes. Look at it. Was, we were at five. 15 and look at it. Oh, it's 5.30. Yes. Well, we're, I still have a couple things I want to say. Can I share just a couple more things with you guys? Yes. Okay. Hang in there with me. You're doing great. Okay. <laughs> um, in addition to seeking the greatest gift, I think it's really important to know that we all have gifts we can bring. Mm -hmm. These magi, they brought what they had to Jesus. And do you know that we all have something we can bring to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the things that we can bring to Jesus? Um, well, we can, um, we can be friends with him and he gives, and he gives us an extra life. And, and, we, and, and we can, um, and we can be kind and all these other things and, and all these People will like like you, and and then you will you will um, have to worry about any about anything. 
That's really good, Kale. I liked what you said. You know what's cool about that is you don't even like you don't even need to have those aren't even things you you can buy in the store. Mm -mm, no. Right? Being kind doesn't cost us anything. No. But you can show people who Jesus is yeah. by the way we love people. That's kind of what I'm saying. I love what you said, man. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. What else? What else can we bring to Jesus? Um, we can give him, of course, our heart. And we can give him our thoughts and our worries. Um, and when we wake up in the morning, we can just center ourselves on him. And remember that he's the one that's on the throne and mm. that in that we don't have to worry about these things in this life mm. so it's hard to remember that sometimes and i mean there's been times even this week where ruby and i were feeling stressed and we just grabbed hands and prayed and re-centered on mm. the lord and give our thoughts and our worries to him and he immediately just brought in that peace so yeah we had a moment like that yesterday, mm -hmm. too. <laughs> Keeping it real. Keeping it real. <laughs> um, I was thinking about this, too, is that, like, not only do we bring what we have, like, you know, what, okay, so the, the Magi, they brought these gifts to Jesus, gold, you know what they were? Gold, yeah. frankincense, Mark. And myrrh <laughs> and that those are kind of weird gifts but they're actually really meaningful and they speak to the worth that Jesus has right so the gold represents that he's a king and the frankincense uh, was something that for a priest mm -hmm. and the myrrh was something that you would bury when somebody died and we know that Jesus was gonna give his life as a sacrifice and even as a baby these magi were speaking to the worth that Jesus had. And we can give gifts that show people their worth. We can give our hearts to God, but we can also give gifts to other people that show them their worth, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. What are some things that we can give uh, like to others? What are some gifts that cost nothing that we can give to others that show them the worth um, that they've been given by God? Better. Yeah, that's the greatest gift, right? Mm -hmm. If we share Jesus with them. Yeah. That's really cool. To be a to be a light in the darkness, to just be like because if you have Jesus inside of you, like you it becomes easier to be kind to people and to show like his love through mm -hmm. you. And so just to be that light in other people's lives. Yeah. Yeah, like today. We were driving and we were going to go pick up Kale from school and there was a woman who was coming out of the parking lot at the hook and her car just stopped and then she tried to restart it and stop but it was kind of like crooked through the street and the cars were just zooming around her and we were back about maybe five cars and cars mm -hmm. were pulling into the parking lot and she was just kind of in the way. And as soon as it was our turn, Ruby and I, like, we had a choice to either zoom around her or to stop. And we needed to go get Kali from school, but I knew we had about 10 minutes. So I pulled up beside her and said, is there anything we can do? Can we help you? Mm -hmm. And so she said, I think I need a jump. And so we just did a three-point turn, pulled that baby around, and, you know, took that time. And, you know, just praying that we could be a light in her life and to slow down and help people and... I think there's things like that we have opportunities every day and that's giving a gift of time or kindness or a word or actually looking someone in the eyes and being present with them mm. is huge because we know that we have a light inside of us that shines bright. Yeah. yeah. And just being like ears, I guess, to listen because mm -hmm. some people really just need to talk it out. <laughs> yeah. It's really good, you guys. Thank you for what you shared. That's really encouraging to me. And we'll leave you with these two questions. One is, how will you seek the greatest gift this Christmas? And number two, how will you share the greatest gift this Christmas?
Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Love Merry you guys. Christmas. Got a happy new year. <laughs> See you next year. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> hey, greetings. Hi, my name is uh, uh, Steve, and this is my wife, Donna. Hi. Hey, we just wanted to, uh, uh, yeah, let you know that at some point we're going to be, we're going to be taking communion, probably in a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. And so if you need to put it on pause right now and to get your bread or cracker and some juice, uh, please do that. We, uh, we appreciate that. And also, hey, I just wanted to get yeah, with Danny and really his family's message. It was so cool. He talked a lot about seeking really the gift, seeking really the gift of Jesus, as well as he talked about, about giving. And so really that part of seeking of the Lord, there's, there might be things in your heart, in your life, that you're really wanting to ask the Lord for, that you're wanting to give to him, and, and you're wanting to talk with him, and to really yeah, speak, yeah, what's really in your heart. There's things that you've wanted to give, and you can do that. It's, and that's between you and the Lord. So I just wanted to mention that to you. And I want to talk a little bit about giving the gift of Jesus to others. And one of my favorite scriptures in Matthew talks about um, freely you have received, so freely give. And that's something we all have received from Jesus. And we, he's given us so much. And that place of thinking of others and who can I think about? What can I give to them? What could I say to them? And Jenny talked a little bit about that. It's just being in that moment. Um, when you really see a need or, or you can really go after um, meeting a need for somebody and just it could be a word it could be doing something for them just really being able to give the gift of Jesus and who he is to us to others and for perhaps people who don't know him yet too yes and so in regards to communion as we're getting ready right now I just want to lead us into a prayer uh, really with uh, regarding those two you know really questions that was asked and so if you uh, could pray along with me I'd, I'd like to lead us in a prayer so Lord Jesus we just thank you for today and and Lord we thank you for those who are listening and we thank you uh, really that you call us to seek you and to seek you and Lord the gifts that we can bring to you as well as Lord that uh, that we are able to give the gift that you've given us to others and so we pray for each one of us today. And as we are with our families or, or with, you know, some friends, we just ask, Lord, that you would be there with us. And we thank you for that, Lord. In your name, Jesus. And right now, we'd like to uh, uh, take communion together. And I'm going to break the bread and take the communion. And what I'd like to say, this might be for you. This might be your first time that you, maybe you, you want to respond to Jesus. You want to respond to that gift. And you want to invite him into your life you, you, you need that place for him you this would be the first time that you would come to know him so as we're taking communion you can uh, repeat after me you could just say jesus come into my life and forgive me and he comes in and he will be with you and you'll be and he'll be with you forever and so together now as we are part, uh, taking of communion you know the bread always represents how jesus was broken for us that he would give us new life, that he would bring healing to us. And so that's for all of us. So today, if you need healing, and just receive that healing from Jesus, let's partake of the bread. Now we want to go ahead and partake of the cup. And when we think of the cup, we think of the forgiveness of sins, that Jesus shed his blood to um, really wash our slate clean of any wrongs we've ever done and the wrongs that we will do and that place that we can live in that freedom and who he is. So we're gonna partake of the cup together. Thank you so much. We're just so um, glad that you have done this with us today. Have a wonderful day and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Well, that 30 minutes went by pretty fast, um, but I know it was meaningful for us. I hope it was for you too. Um, we have a few things that we want to mention as we're wrapping everything up. 
That's right, so right here on the screen, you're gonna see a link for our online connect card. And so if you want more information about our church, maybe you wanna get connected or find out about upcoming things or you need prayer, or even you said yes to the love of Jesus, fill out that connect card and one of our team will get back to you right away and we'd love to connect you to what God is doing here. But while you're on the website, there's also a giving link. So there's one more week left in the year and what that means is that many of us are preparing an end of year special gift for partnership with what God is doing here. So the things that you're experiencing even here today, this is made possible because of your financial partnership. And so you can give right on our website. Just make sure you do it by December 31st if you want it to count for this year. So next Sunday, we are all, all of our locations are meeting at Scotts Valley at 10 a.m.? 10 a.m.? Okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Scotts Valley at 10 a.m. Um, all of our locations are coming together for an in-person service at Scotts Valley at 10 a.m. And we also have online option as well. That's right. So whatever works for you. If you've never been to Scotts Valley, hey, maybe consider heading up there and checking that out. It's going to be a fun, yeah. fun way to kick off the year. But then the next Sunday, this is the final thing, the next Sunday, January the 8th, we have a new message series called Brand New Day. And here's what we're asking God to do. We're, we're looking to his word to things like this. Listen to this. Because of the Lord's great love, the Bible says, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The truth is that no matter how dark the night might be, God's mercies are new every day. And we want to see those stories. And in fact, you're going to hear stories from people all across our locations of how God has brought about a brand new day in their lives. I know I need that. We need that. And I know you need it as well. So mark your calendars January 8th. Start off the new year with us a brand new day. Well, I think that's a wrap. I, yep. I think we've covered it all. I think we've experienced it all. We hope you have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. We wish, we, <laughs> we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.